So maybe it is easier for you to use a uh, Google Translator and you can read the information uh, in uh, our pages here. So we have this international relations. So I'm also in charge of uh, one of the offices here. Um, anyway, due to time constraint, I will not uh, talk more about that. And, and this is uh, the four season views of Gifu campus. So it is a beautiful campus uh, with very uh, vivid uh, season change. Yeah? So right now is the beginning of autumn. So in December, uh, when we uh, normally in November, like middle November, we will change the maple leaves will change into very beautiful color of uh, color radiation. So it will be very nice. So in winter, usually the coldest season will be in January. So we will have some snow here in Gifu as well. And well, Gifu, it's, uh, this is Gifu prefecture, if I enlarge, it is right in the middle of Japan. That's why we call it, uh, this area is called the central area of Japan. The biggest uh, city, the metropolis is Nagoya. So Nagoya is just about 20 minutes by train from Gifu. So if you come uh, from Tokyo, then you have to take the bullet train, Shinkansen, uh, two hours. Uh, Osaka, you can take local train, uh, uh, 2.5 hours. The nearest is Nagoya. Uh, right now, you can reach Nagoya in 20 minutes if you use the fast local train. So this is an uh, uh, overview of Gifu University. You can see we still have some uh, greeneries around the campus. So, sorry, I have a chat message. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, the Faculty of Engineering. So our faculty was founded in 1942. And oh, gosh, the slide stops again. Uh, okay. So basically there are five uh, faculties and the School of Medicine already moved to our uh, campus uh, 10 years, uh, yes, 10 years ago. You can see there's a helicopter for, for, for the hospital. And there's also a Gifu Pharmaceutical University, uh, which uh, measure in the development of drugs and uh, uh, which is quite close to the medical field. So our motto is, you know, learning, exploring and contributing. So five main uh, faculties and faculty of engineering is the biggest with 40% of student. And most of the university in Japan are not so big because we want to maintain a, a close relationship between the students and the lecturers. And then we have a quota, so we cannot receive more than a certain numbers of students uh, compared to uh, the number of staff. But anyway, we do have a faculty of science. So the faculty of science are distributed between the uh, faculty of engineering and the faculty of applied biological sciences. And this uh, ABS is uh, for the agriculture and uh, veterinary, it will be in this ABS faculty. We also have a um, uh, faculty of education, of course, and the faculty of regional studies will take care of all the social sciences. Uh, such as uh, economics. Uh, uh, we don't have business admin, but we do have uh, like uh, uh, something like administration, uh, management course, but we don't have a business administration. Anyway, uh, like I said, we are a small university. So the total number of students is about 8,000 uh, uh, with about 4% uh, international students. So, this is the number, but this is uh, three years ago. Right now we have more Indonesian students uh, because we have this uh, advanced global program started uh, three, four years ago. And we have an, a, a quite a number of uh, students and also the young docent from uh, Indonesia universities joining our programs as PhD students. So I might actually, we are open for applications for HEP PhD program. Uh, we have some scholarship. Uh, I, I think I will forward the information tomorrow later. Yeah. So yeah, uh, if um, we also have scholarship for master's students, but unfortunately it is uh, limited for uh, to it, it's limited to our partner university students. 
Yeah, because uh, we need the partner university to do the selections of students for us. And by recommendation, we will do our second selection in Kifu. Yeah. But anyway, I will send Moral the uh, PowerPoint later. Uh, maybe uh, if you are interested, please contact Moral later after our class. Uh, for the PhD program, I think the application deadline. Oh, the application deadline is in November, yeah? Anyway, I will try to send you the file as soon as possible. If just in case, if there's someone uh, interested uh, to apply, uh, I mean to continue PhD in, in Give University. Okay. Uh, all right. So okay, my slide. Uh, I, oh, so I, anyway, this is not so important. So this is in our faculty. This is the number of staff we have. So it's about eight hundred staff, including the. Uh, but never mind. <laughs> okay, this is the departments. Um, so we have uh big, big departments now. Big de departments meaning that uh one department is actually divided into several courses, uh, like my department, the department of chemistry and biomedical sciences. So all the chemists, uh, including myself, is also here. Um, but we also have uh, professors uh, doing uh, food science, enzyme studies, uh, biological uh, studies uh, involving uh, microorganism. So biotech is also in our department. We, we, we restructure the, this, uh, all, uh, all the departments like every 10 years. So it's crazy because uh, the Japan government is trying to, you know, maximize. They say maximize yeah, our teaching uh, efficiency. So every ten years we have to restructure, and which is quite a burden for us, and also a burden for the student. Yeah. So this is for the master courses. We have uh, ten master courses. We have almost all the field uh, of studies except architecture. We don't have architecture here. So, but our partner university, Nagoya, uh, which is very near, we together with Nagoya University, we are now under the same institute we call Tokai Institute. So Tok Nagoya University has the best uh, architecture course in Japan and is very famous. So for those who want to do architecture, I recommend you to go to Nagoya University. So for PhD, it's even, uh, sorry, it, we already restructured again PhD course. This is the old divisions. Uh, please ignore this. But if you look at uh, the triangle here, for undergraduates, our capacity now is about 550. And then about half of our students will continue masters. And actually now more than 60% will continue masters and 40% will try to get a job in a, a local uh, company. And our employment rate is almost 100% because we are the only national university in Kifu. And then not many students will continue doctor. That's why our capacity, which is our quota is 27. So yeah, when we reach our quota, we will not take any more PhD students. So, so this is the, what I meant by capacity. Anyway, uh, uh, same as Indonesia, I mean, Japan is an earthquake uh, country. So most of uh, our, our building also have to be renewed every 30 years. So recently, uh, like uh, 2017 was the after, what's already the 30 year limit. So we, it took us four years to you know, rebuild all the buildings in our faculty. And of course, now we have to maintain the seismic structure Seismic structure means the structure that is anti-earthquake. So all our buildings are anti-earthquake. So when earthquake, you know, uh, occurs, our building will be shaking with the earthquake in order to reduce, I mean, to minimize the, the effect of the earthquake. Uh, there are some centers uh, I will not, I will pass because I, uh, I think our time is not so much. And uh, there are centers for materials and solar cell and, uh, this is for the Thai uh, engineering, especially for the mechanical course. And this is composite. And this one is, uh, we have very, uh, we have a very popular course for the civil engineering. And in Japan, Kifu University is like top five in civil engineering studies. So especially we, ha we have experts in uh, the bridge 
and also tunnel. So maybe you, when you come to Gifu, you'll be surprised because we have a lot of mountains here in Gifu. And, uh, you know, when we connect to another city, we have to go through so many tunnels. So from, from you know, in Gifu prefecture, this is the south of Gifu prefecture is Gifu city. The north of Gifu prefecture is called Takayama. So from Gifu to Takayama, if you take the highway, you have to pass by as many as 80 tunnels. Yeah? So it's quite crazy, but we have a lot of experts and we have companies uh, sending their, uh, their you know, engineers to come back for trainings again, especially to maintain the bridges and the tunnels. So, this solar cell center is already renamed again. Now, no more solar cell. They call it the next generation energy center. So that includes uh, the wind energy, of course, the uh, hyphenated of the methanation, you know, to reduce uh, carbon dioxide, like the carbon neutral. Uh, that's a lot, a lot more. Well, inside the campus, it's quite green. We try to maintain a greenery. This is a library. So it's the, it's, it, the campuses is quite nice. And then the lab and the classroom. And then we also have uh, tours for international students, ski trip. And then, yeah, sometimes it's lunch meetings. And then this is international houses for students, building A and building B. And building C, it's the new building. And this is especially for researcher. So especially for our guests, when they want to come and do collaboration for just a short period, like one month, we can let them stay in the building C. Uh, it's fully furnished with full kitchen and everything. Uh, what is uh, more attractive is that there is a mosque <laughs> near to Gifu, uh, which is not so uh, common, of course, it's not so common. Uh, when I was students, like 20 years ago, there was a uh, most of my friends, you know, they are trying so hard to get donations. And this mosque is actually, uh, uh, it has been built uh, quite new. And not many universities in, in, in Gifu, I mean in Japan, uh, can have a mosque nearby. And this mosque, it's, you can, from the campus, you can just go there by walking, like maybe 10 minutes. But most of the students here, they will use bicycle. So in Japan, it's very really, common to see uh, a professor even, you know, to use a bicycle uh, around the campus or between the cities. So it, between the cities. So sometimes you will see somebody with a suit and then they use a bicycle. I use bicycle as well. So most of the time we use to travel bicycle, which is quite, um, I, I think it's quite uh, environmental friendly so that we don't have to, you know, emit so much of carbon dioxide. Okay, anyway, uh, this is the poster Moral has made for me. When you look at this photo and when you look at my real face, maybe you will get disappointed. But anyway, um, uh, when I would like to uh, uh, inform, uh, maybe you're already aware of our schedule. So today uh, I will talk about the general of chromatography methods and just uh, uh, most of the chromatographic methods is quite uh, common. Yeah. So before we started our uh, lectures today, I think most of you have uh, experience uh, already studied, go to the extractions. So SPE, so extraction is the basic of chromatography. So uh, when you have multiple extractions, so that is the actually the, the main of uh, uh, chromatography. So um, during, here it's only shown seven times. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, in one of the schedule, I might have to change the time due to some uh, unavoidable circumstances. So maybe uh, Moro will update uh, you later on the website, our uh, updated date. And then we will also have a webinar. So um, my major is, uh, uh, capillary liquid chromatography and also ion chromatography. So I would like to share uh, my uh, insights. I mean, like uh, what we are doing in our lab and then like about how ion chromatography is being used in environmental analysis, especially, you know, acid rain uh, uh, monitoring pro project. 
our lab uh, was uh, collaborating with uh, the local Gifu uh, government. Uh, I sent my students every year, like two students, to do like like a part time job. Yeah, so in the prefecture office to help the prefecture office to monitor the acid rain of a uh, um, of a lake. Uh, never mind. I will talk more about this when I have my uh, webinar later. So. Actually, there are so many different types of chromatography, and I think Moro has summarized this is a perfect planning. Yeah? So we have uh, a bit of everything which is so important. And uh, the first and second will be about uh, the column and planner chromatography. And then the third and fourth time, it's about the uh, interaction. Yeah? So I will talk more about the type of interactions when we start our lecture, uh, the third lecture, and of course the fourth lecture also dealing with uh, another type of interactions. So third, four, it's uh, interactions. And then fifth, this is the most uh, widely used uh, method in any company or any lab in Japan or maybe in Indonesia, you can find a HPLC system. Yeah? So 80% of the applications is using HPLC. And then of course, by just HPLC is not enough. And then and gas chromatography and because we have volatile uh, materials. So when we have a volatile, which is not stable, we have to yet use gas chromatography, which is about 20%. So the fifth and the sixth will cover all the, you know, uh, the real sample analysis, which is so good. And then in the seventh, uh, which is electrophoresis, um, electrophoresis is another type of, uh, uh, if I say it is another type of chromatography, maybe my friend who is major in electrophoresis, they will be not happy yeah? because to them, they think electrophoresis is a new era of uh, separation. They do not use a uh, separation uh, like we, we call it a column yeah? so they have a column but they don't have the particles inside the column so anyway i will talk more also about this and hi okay so i i guess this is the study plan you have and for those who are taking this separation chemistry and more of there you guys already taken uh, analytical chemistry before so Maybe you already know analytical chemistry is a fundamental technology that supports many areas, including life sciences. Like maybe you know this, uh, the, yeah, this is a DNA and also uh, materials science. So some, sometimes people will be uh, my misunderstood material science, but as a official word for, uh, for knowledge, Materials, you have to S and S here. So it's a materials size uh, area. Maybe it's difficult for you to guess this picture. I don't know if anybody know what is this uh, picture is all about. Okay, no mind. Uh, it's, a, it's a single crystal of zinc oxide. So yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's amazing to know zinc oxide can be so beautiful. So this is a single crystal of zinc oxide. And also uh, it uh, in environmental sciences, so like, like this, um, you know, when you talk about environment, so there are many environments, including waters, air, and also you know, well, human beings, of course. But I, I'm here, maybe I will talk uh, more about the, uh, the water environment throughout our, our, our lectures. So maybe I don't have to ask you uh, again, yeah? What do you know about analytical chemistry? Yeah? Well, basically it's the knowledge to determine what and how much, right? Well, maybe as a kid, you already, when you start eating something or when you start uh, doing something, you are already in a form of analyzing something already. Yeah? Uh, in Kifu and Nagoya area is very famous with miso. Miso is a kind of uh, fermented soybeans uh, in, in, in Japan culture. Maybe if you're familiar with Japanese, Japanese food, you will know miso, miso soup, right? So in, in Kifu, uh, this hoba, we call it hoba. This is the leaf, uh, hoba leaf. So hoba miso, 
the miso on the hoba leaf. So just the miso and with some spring onions. So just like this, you know, we can finish one big bowl of rice. So it goes perfectly well with the rice. And this is the miso uh, udong. Udong is a uh, noodles, which is so popular as well. And also in, in, in this area, uh, umeboshi is also. So when you already start eating something, you're already experiencing some form of, uh, you know, analytical chemistry. Yeah. I always tell my students, the only thing you need to remember are just these two terms, yeah? qualitative and quantitative. So yeah, what kind and how much, that's all. Yeah? It sounds simple, but it is not so simple. Yeah? Because there are so many uh, factors that we need to consider when we do especially quantitative analysis. Yeah? Like um, the amount of uh, accuracy will depend on your method. Yeah. So, and of course, how much time or how much money you can spend on a certain analysis will depend on what kind of method you can use. So, for example, this is the basic uh, of uh, gravimetric analysis. Yeah. So, for example, when there is a solution like this and you want to know the amount of uh, silver, argentum nitride here. So, what do you do to get the amount of silver from this solution? So the easiest is to form uh, the chloride, right? So by forming chloride, so we just add uh, sodium chloride. And then when they react, we can form, uh, there will be a reaction between the argentum and the chloride, of course, and we will have a solid here. And after that, we just uh, do the filtration and we weigh the compound. So this is maybe the early part uh, when you do the uh, student experiments, maybe in your practical classes. And um, maybe there is a part you do the uh, qualitative analysis for all the heavy metals, like the, uh, the metals in the group one or group two or group three and group four, uh, because uh, we can use chloride and other uh, uh, salt to um, separate uh, each uh, ions, heavy metal ions from uh, each other using solubility. Uh, sorry, time consuming means that when, uh, yeah, it takes time, yeah, of course, because what happened, you know, when it is more than one target compounds? Because most of the time in the real sample analysis, you don't have only one target, yeah, you have multiple targets. So, it, it will be too time consuming if you just, you know, do one by one and then you have to consider the solubility and you have to heat and cool and heat and cool, you know, it's, it's really time consuming. So usually uh, we use instrumental analysis. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, example of instruments that is very commonly used. And this is a GC and this is the mass spec. And this is a common HPLC system in our near to our uh, analytical center. So if I will list down the uh, traditional methods, like the gravimetric methods and volumetric, maybe you know volumetric. So example, the titration uh, of acid base. So you use acid and base titration, which is the common one and calorimetric analysis. So we use the color and uh, in this uh, 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 lecture series, chromatography is a form of uh, instrumental analysis. So, okay, one simple question, yeah. Uh, what do you think, you know, the main difference between chromatography and other instrumental analysis? such as ICP, I, I don't know if you know ICP, but you know, UV, I, I guess maybe you know UV or X-ray diffraction, or maybe uh, a atomic, uh, AAA, like atomic AAS, atomic emission spectrometry. Among all these uh, instruments, I mean, chromatography, it's different, yeah. Can someone guess? Oh, you, you don't have to tell me, but you, you can write down later. <laughs> but so what the main difference between chromatography and other 
uh, instruments. Just, I will give you 10 seconds to think. I should time. Can I try? Yes, uh, please, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, mungkin uh, prinsip dasar dari kromatografi itu uh, uh, pemisahan dari fase gerak sama fase diamnya itu yang yeah. perfect yes yeah. yes perfect thank you Mora <laughs> so the, sorry oh so this is another students is it it yeah. sounds like yeah. sorry yeah can you get it yes I got it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes uh, the, the main uh, difference between chromatography is there is a separation. Yeah? Yes, true. There is a perfect answer. So in other, uh, in other uh, methods, you do not need separation. But in sometimes, then, okay, another question. Why do we need to do separation? Yeah? Another 10 seconds. Yang mahasiswa ini kayaknya bisa jawab nih harusnya. Iya. Sila coba lagi. If you want to try, please. You can really pick uh, someone uh, from. Oh, really? <laughs> Maybe the student will be so, uh, you know, so worried. There will somebody will call them. <laughs> oh, there is question from Satria. Uh, can I? Oh, yeah, please. Satria. Yeah, yeah, Malfa, Malfa, sure. Uh, ah. I think your separation is for finding a pure compound. Yes, yes, yes. Finding a pure compound that is one of the uh, 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 important things. Have you heard of the word spatiation? Spatiation. So spatiation is the word uh, S-P-A-C-I-A-T-I-O-N. Spatiation is the separations between uh, the compounds with different charge. For example, iron, ferrum, you have ferrum 2 plus and ferrum 3 plus, right? So when you use AAS method, the atomic emission spectrometry to determine ferrum, ferrum will come out as a total ferrum, ferrum 2 plus and you know, ferrum 3 plus. So in this case, when uh, ferrum 2 and 3, it's not so um, problem, it's okay. Yeah? But when you have another uh, heavy metals like chromium, Chromium 3 plus and chromium 6 plus. 6 plus is very toxic, yeah, and the toxicity is very high. So, but without doing the separation or the spatiation, we call it, so we can never uh, determine whether this compound is toxic or not, because if you use the AS, you will only get the total of chromium, but you will not get the exact amount of chromium 6 plus, which is the toxic compound. So that's why in this case, uh, ion chromatography, yeah, which is also uh, what I'm going to talk in the webinar, it's very important because ion chromatography is the only method that we can use to do spatiation. But anyway, the, um, the, the fundamental methods, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, of, uh, the fundamentals I will explain in our uh, the ion exchange uh, uh, part. That's why I, I that's why I say Moro's planning is perfect. Yeah, so he has uh you know basically cover every area of the uh, chromatography uh, separations. Okay, thank you uh, uh for your uh, trials. All right. Oh my slides. Okay. Okay. So I, I guess some of you already uh do some pre reading about chromatography. So is it a, actually a physical method of separation? Yeah. So sometimes people might think it, it's like a chemical uh, method, but it's actually a physical method of separations. So the compounds will be um, like, uh, what we, we call it like uh, distributed between the two phases, uh, like uh, one is move and one, uh, one, uh, one is moving like a mobile phase, and then one does not move. So when you do the extractions, it is also so much different. Yeah, I mean, so much similar, sorry. So like liquid, liquid extraction. So you have the distribution between two liquids. When you have solid phase extractions, so your support, it's going to be a solid. 
So in, in, in this case, you will have to use a solvent, uh, which is uh, to uh, get those from the uh, solid support. And the separations will depend on how fast or how slow or how much they interact with each other. Yeah? So the easiest way it's for you to imagine chromatography, it's like, you know, like when a group of students go into a, a row of shops, when you go to an archive or something. Yeah? So when there's a shops about uh, like games, you know, I, I don't know, bookstore, maybe some students will like the game better so they will stay longer in the game shop. So when some students like to read, they will stay in the book, you know, shop uh, uh, longer and they will, they will come out from the shop a bit longer. So this is how if they like the uh, stationary face uh, better, uh, compared to the uh, to the moving, I mean to the session um, mobile phase, then they will stay longer. Yeah. So the degree of whether you like it or not, we call it affinity. Will depends on how long you can stay, and we call it retention. In in other words. So, uh, it started by this uh, gentleman, uh, Zwet, Michael Zwet. So he uh, actually he is a, a botanist. So this is the apparatus used by Michal uh, when he started to, I mean, like accidentally separated some uh, plant pigments. So this is uh, the uh, column that he used. And this is the palm, like a hand palm. So when uh, he packed uh, the alumina inside and uh, hexan, hexan was the organic solvent that was used and then when uh, separated, the, he collected uh, using uh, a beaker underneath here like this. So if you want to read more about uh, uh, Zwet's paper, the first paper on chromatography is actually published in uh, 1903. Um, so from the word, it's a Greek word. So chroma means the color and graphers mean record. So chromatography means to record color. Yeah. So the four pigments that he uh, managed to separate, it's uh, chlorophyll A and B, centerfill, and also keratin. And so, so the mechanism, it's uh, like I said before, it depends on the, um, uh, the affinity, like the interaction. Yeah. So just imagine this is a, a, a column like a stationary phase. So when I have a mixture of ink, like uh, ink with different colors, sorry, uh, this one white means uh, like, uh, just white. So when we have a mobile face coming from the left to the right, so they will move together uh, with the mobile face depending on, in this case means the red color like the mobile face better than the green color. Yeah? So after separations, we must have something to detect because without detection, it is meaningless. So usually most of the time we use UV detector, like maybe 85% of the current method use, it's using a uh, UV detector. So when the sample pass by uh, UV, the detector, that will be detected as a peak. And then like the, under the same condition, I mean, if you use the same column and if you use the same uh, concentration of mobile phase, the same uh, compound will always come out in the same time. So meaning that by using, we, we call it the retention time, how long they can be retained inside the column will determine uh, the compounds, what kind of compound that is uh, from uh, this uh, mixture. Yeah? So by using the time, uh, retention time, we can determine, uh, we can do uh, qualitative analysis and the amount of the, the sample will be determined by the absorption of the UV absorption. So how big the peaks is will determine how much the contain inside. So meaning that by getting this chromatogram, chromatogram means the separation results, we can have qualitative and quantitative analysis at the same time. So 
that's why chromatography is a powerful uh, method because of uh, this uh, very convenient uh, uh, separation profile. And maybe you want to know a, uh, you know a bit of the development of the chromatography and the related techniques. So after one of, um, I mean, after uh, Zwet uh, invented or uh, this uh, chromatography in his uh, paper in uh, 1903, for more than 25 years, nobody has been doing anything. There was something else, but um, not exactly. Uh, people uh, have some record of some separation being done until Kuhn came out with the separations of carotenoids, which is also quite a famous uh, separations in uh, 1931. And one of the most important um, invention is uh, by uh, J.P. Martin. So Martin invented partition chromatography, uh, which is the basic of all the separations. And in 1944, he also introduced paper uh, chromatography. If you look at here, Martin, 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 so, in 1952, he also uh, introduced gas chromatography. So Martin is actually a very famous and he contributed a lot to the world of chromatography. And actually, you know, after Martin introduced paper chromatography and uh, because it is so easy, so many people is using, you know, paper chromatography. And when he got his, he actually got uh, a Nobel prize you know, as a chromatographer, he was the first chromatographer to get a Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1952, yeah? Uh, not for paper, yeah? It's actually for partition chromatography, but because the paper was so, was so popular and some people, they misunderstood, they say, oh, Martin got a Nobel Prize using a paper, yeah? But it is, it is very uh, interesting, but actually, of course, it's not for the paper chromatography, it's for the partition chromatography, yeah? So, and you can see here in between the paper and the tin layer here and the, of course the tin layer used uh, the, fundament, uh, the, the, the fundamental uh, parts from a paper chromatography, uh, which is like an advanced um, uh, paper chromatography version. It's a tin layer version. And after the gas chromatography, uh, GC, and I mean, no acid analyzer become so popular because uh, in the field of drug delivery and drug, uh, not delivery, drug systems. And Gole Kalam is another um, breakthrough in Kalam technology. So Gole Kalam stands, um, uh, so on. usually to, uh, to us, chromatographer, when we mention Gole Kalam, uh, especially those in the GC uh, field, this is the open tubular column used for especially gas chromatography. So Gole column was an invention, yeah? So like the capillaries, the size of capillary, everything, and uh, will also further uh, like, you know, uh, make this GC become so popular. Yeah? And then uh, gel uh, filtration chromatography also. And then we have this super critical uh, fruit chromatography by Clasper, gel formations. You can see there's a lot of uh, ion, uh, chromatography uh, methods. And at the end, after this, you can see the name has been changed to capillary zone electrophoresis. Yeah? So few silica capillary, another column uh, invention after Gole is this uh, materials. The silica uh, materials uh, was able to make in the size of capillary uh, in 1979. And after this, the field of electrophoresis just explore, you know, it's everybody want to do electrophoresis, yeah? Because if you look at the separations, the peak's capacity, it's crazy, yeah? So yeah, nobody, I mean, LC method, um, it's very, dis it's very sad yeah, because I'm an LC chromatographer, but LC can never beat uh, electrophoresis in terms of separation capacity. Yeah. Anyway, I will talk about this later. So, and ion chromatography, uh, which was uh, started in 1975. In, in this time also, another method, we call it uh, flow injection analysis, uh, which is quite 
similar, not similar. Yeah, it's also the same like uh, electrophoresis. Like there is no stationary phase, just anti tubes and pumps. Yeah, so just flow system, and then uh, the detections is done by doing reaction. So meaning that it's uh, very convenient and it is portable. And then the professors who are majoring or who are doing research, we call it FIA. They always say you can do any research as long as you have a pump and you have some tubes, that's all. Yeah? <laughs> so it's, it's very funny. Yeah? And for your information, sometimes I have students asking me, actually in Japan, um, most of the time we don't ask uh, how old are you or your age. Yeah? But since sometimes most of my students, they want to know my age, actually I'm born in 1975, same as this ion chromatography. So you can calculate and uh, my age. Yeah, so young, 25 years old. Anyway, uh, this is Martin. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, Professor Martin or Dr. Martin, he was never a professor. He was a, a doctor. He passed away in 2002, uh, July 28. So he was a uh, recorded um, emeritus member of the Japan Analytical Sciences Society. So we have uh, some popular professors uh, to be uh, like emeritus members. So, so you mind, I will introduce next time. Okay, anyway. So um, yeah, it, 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 a great person has passed, but of course what he has left for us we will always be so useful, yeah. And here is also written here, 1952 Nobel Prize. Maybe it's difficult for you to understand. So this was published in Bunseki. Bunseki means analytical in, in Japanese, yeah. So the main purpose of chromatography, there are actually two, only two main purposes, yeah. The one we call it preparative. Preparative means to do isolations and to do purifications. And the other one is, of course, the, 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 the common one is to do analytical, which is to do the analysis in determinations. And um, okay, uh, this is a series of different sizes of columns. Yeah, can can you guess which column or until which uh, uh, size of the? You you can, you can see from uh, from left. The column diameter is very big, and to right we have a smaller diameter of columns. So, can you guess which part of the column is used to do preparative, and which part of the column is used to do analytical purposes? Ten seconds. <laughs> Okay, 10 seconds has passed. All right, the preparative, we use the big column. Yeah. Oh, we have some chats. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the left one. Yes, yes. The big ones are for preparative, yes. So maybe you know why, right? I don't have to say why, right? So the, the reason why we use the big one for preparative is because a bigger column have more amount of cellular phase, meaning that having will have higher separation capacity. Yeah? So for the analytical purposes, that's why it's a very severe problem if we do not do pre-treatment of the samples before anal analysis. So it's very, um, I will talk more about sample preparation also when we talk about LC. So sometimes, uh, most of the time we'll spend just to prepare the sample, yeah? not for the analysis. You know? So I will talk, about the uh, in in real analysis how we normally do the uh, the the, the uh, performance. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just for your informations, maybe you know uh, there are different terms in in chromatography related to chromatography. Sometimes in 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 Japan, I need to teach the student how to pronounce like with some extra like uh, chromatography. Yeah? so it's uh, it means the knowledge process or method. Chromatogram means the uh, profile, separation profile. Chromatograph without just the 
food means the apparatus, the experimental setup. And the one with the uh, chromatographic uh, is the adjective, yeah? Like, so maybe you do, maybe I don't need to tell you what this, you, you already know, just in case. Yeah? So um, there are many different ways of uh, classifying uh, the methods. So today, uh, yeah, I will talk about these uh, two, uh, I mean, based on the separation bed, we call it separation bed. So basically, there are two types of recorded bed. One is a planner, one is a column, column like the one shown before. So next uh, meeting, I will talk more about column. Uh, there are some similarities between uh, GC and LC, like uh, using the particle pack column and all the, uh, for GC, uh, the open tubular, this is what we call the Gaulle columns, and for LC, and uh, because particle pack column, it's uh, very packed, as the name uh, suggested. Sometimes when we want to do fast separations, so recently the monoliths or monolithic columns has been introduced or has been used as, they say, the next generation's column. And the porosity of the monoliths is like uh, is like in between, yeah. So open tubula is like in the middle is open, yeah. It's just open tube, and so combining these two, we, the 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 porosity of the monoliths is actually just just nice for LC and also can be used for GC, but unfortunately it is so difficult to have reproducible results. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about these two. If there is a chance, I can talk about my research. My research is mainly on these uh, monoliths materials. So for the planner, like uh, paper, it's so easy, or maybe you already experience. And the advanced, not the advanced type, but the uh, the usual type that is being used in the market, it's actually the thin layer uh, chromatography we call TLC. And most of the time, we use two-dimensional uh, uh, planner. I'm uh, two-dimensional means that you know. Uh, okay, I will talk later. Uh, and like uh, liquid. This is liquid. This is gas, and so on. So you you can see paper. Uh, this this is a long form for paper. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. And um, so, okay, uh, this is uh, the uh, conventional paper chromatography where you use a long uh, filter paper and you will dip inside a, a, a solvent. And then, uh, this is how this is the actual, uh, uh, sorry, colors that you can do if you use a uh, a plant uh, pigment, like a down, any down, yeah. So you can just take a part of the uh, of the leaves, and then you can uh, extract them in organic solvent, and then you try to uh, concentrate by drying the solvent and make it so thick, and then you can just make one dot here, and you can dip inside a a a, a, a solutions, and then you will see it is move. It will be moving uh upwards uh because th this paper is uh adds as a support yeah so you can see here the uh, chlorophyll b a centerfield and uh, carotenoid it's uh being separated from a uh, a plant pigments uh, on the other hand for thin layer so usually it will be um so then it, also, biological samples is uh, mainly used and uh, a bit diff different from paper because paper is mainly cellulose. Like, so in, in the TLC, uh, usually uh, it's called here thin plastic or glass tray, but the support is, uh, the common support is actually silica gel. So, well, silica gel, yeah, you can see it's like a sand, yeah? so the, the compound of sand, but silicones is very, uh, it's a lot, you can find a lot in, the, in, in nature. So silica gels, it's one of the uh, popular support for TLC, not, uh, not like this uh, cellulose. Of course, cellulose is also uh, uh, 
used for the papers. So, okay. Um, like in when you have time in your lab, maybe you can try. Like this is the most simple and yet basic. Yeah. So this I I um every year in summer we have a summer camp for the local high school students. Sometimes the uh the student will come to experience uh chromatography. So well, of course I let them use our system, but before that. Normally, I would let them try to use this uh, paper filter and to draw a uh, uh, like hexagon, uh, hexagonal ink uh, using this is a purple ink. So, of in the middle, we just use the like a like a straw to drip some water, just water. Uh, of course, the ink have to be the water soluble ink. So we drip in the middle, and as you can expect. Uh, the purple ink will be separated into like pinkish color outside. So from maybe it's not so clear here. At after the pinkish area, you can see some light orange here. So this is actually the um the movement of the water. Yeah. So it will you know move outside. And if you draw a hexagon, you will have a nice flower like this. And most of the ink is shining because they have the fluorescence materials. So if you use a UV light, if you do not have a UV light, you can use the uh, the usual fluorescent light, and you can see uh, when th there is a fluorescent compound contained in any kind of inks. Sometimes the student they are so creative, uh, they will draw something and they will use the the, the straw to do different uh, directions. And I remember one time this, this high school boy, he made a Doraemon for me. So it was so funny. He could make a Doraemon from this paper chromatography. Maybe you can try to do. Yeah, at home, uh, if you do not have a paper filter, you can also do it with uh, the tempura paper. Like when you buy something like a gorengan, yeah, you have some paper to, to suck the oil, right? So I, I think that is, they say it's also usable, but I, I never try. If you want to try with your younger or, you know, sisters or brothers, you can try at home the, the effect of uh, paper chromatography. Okay, uh, TLC, I will explain more uh, uh, in details about TLC. Oh. We still have okay. We still have twenty minutes. So TLC, the mobile phase is definitely a liquid. Yeah. So, alright. There is a sound. Comment. Uh, is the sound caused by my computer? Gonna. Sorry. Oh yeah. Any... Sure, sure. You can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, problem, no problem. Okay. Anyway. Um. Uh. The. Usually the thin layer will be formed by passing a, a fine powder on a solid support. So usually it's a solid support on any uh, plastics or glass. Usually we use glass, uh, because <laughs> this is crazy. Maybe because of the effect of sound. Anyway, the substances, uh, they are less attractive, attracted to the solid or are more soluble in the liquid will move faster. Yeah. So, and some move further up the plate by the time that the process has been stopped. Mm, maybe it's easier uh, uh, to, uh, to do, to show you this slide. So like usually uh, the support is uh, a big uh, square plate. So because a, a big square plate, it's very convenient when we want to do two dimensional. Yeah? So the points of samples will be doing will be down here. We have to drip the sample like multiple times to make it as thick as possible. And the mobile face, we will dip inside the mobile face and um, like the solvent here. So we don't need so much solvent so mobile face. So depending on how big your tank is, yeah. So usually we use a tank with a lid. But without a lid, it's also okay. But in order to not to you know have other 
uh, influence from the air, like sometimes the carbon dioxide in the air will give some influence. So it is better to have a lid to cover the tank. And especially when we use organic solvent here, it is a mask to use the cover. So this uh, veterinary phase, which is a support, is uh, usually uh, a plastic or a glass. And we have this uh, silica gel spread and hardened on the support. And when the mobile phase move upwards, it will move upwards, of course, uh, due to the, uh, the, uh, the capillary effect. So this is the analyte bands. Yeah? And this is, we call it the solvent front. Solvent front means the, the maximum level of the movement of solvent. So sometimes when we want to stop the, uh, the, uh, the, the movement, we will have to take out the plate from the tank. Yeah? So when we want to do a two-dimensional uh, TLC, what we normally do is that after finishing the first dimension, like using the same uh, uh, plate, what we do is that we'll take out and then, uh, you know, we just like, like turn 90 degree and then we will dip into another tank. So meaning that in, in this case, usually the sample will be uh, plot near to the corner so that when it's plot here and when uh, the first element will do something here up, then after that, we will put this side under the second uh, element or oh, sorry, it's like second solvent and then it will move up like this. So that, that is causing the uh, two dimensional separations. And the, we usually uh, calculate the efficiency or the, we call it the R factor. So fractions means the fractions of the samples. This is a solvent and this is the original line. So after passing the, uh, the, 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 the sample, uh, this is like a T0. So for example, this is the maximum solvent front and this is A. So the RF of uh, the sample and the light B will be B over A. So it depends on uh, how you mark your uh, plate here. Some people, they use the mark with, uh, uh, with centimeter or millimeter. So it depends on how you, you, you mark your plates. So usually, uh, as you can see from these simple uh, equations, the RF or the, the, uh, the resolutions, or we call it, uh, of the fractions will be uh, between zero and one, yeah? So maybe you can guess, Kana, why is it between zero and one and under what conditions, yeah? Yeah, of course, because A is always, you know, the, the maximum, yeah? So you, when you reach the maximum, it's one. So, but under what conditions you will reach one, yeah? And under what condition you will become zero, yeah? Anybody want to try? I will give you 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. Eight seconds from now. Okay, 10, 12. Okay, maybe you need time to type in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Or uh, can answer it directly, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, for anyone who, who want to ask Professor Lim directly, please. It's quite easy question, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite easy, yeah. Oh, somebody to move in today. Oh, fine. Erin. Hi, Erin. Uh, TLC thing. Okay. Oh, so the so I got faster than spot in a minute and give an answer. And sorry, it's the same as solvent and all this. Yeah. Uh, so on. It's a, of course it's the same. Yeah. So meaning that under what conditions it will be the same. Yeah. Um. Well, the answer is solubility. Yeah. So when the solubility, uh, my slide stuck again. So as you can see from the definitions, yeah. 
the RF is uh, the distance moved by the substance and uh, over the distance moved by the solvent front. Oh, come on, come on. It's very noisy. I just forgot to delete the, the, the sound. So the, so the substance which are soluble in the liquid, the RF will become close to one year. And for those in the opposite side, when it is not soluble, we call it insoluble samples, then it will be close to zero. So it, it depends on the solubility of the, uh, the, the samples. Anyway, uh, this is the, uh, right, the, right now TLC is so easy to get. You can just buy it online and then do it at home. And then for example, this is a, a usual commercial set you can get from Amazon. So it, it, it sold here in Japan for 9,000 yen, which is close, uh, when I convert, it's like 1 million <laughs> rupiah. So some so big in rupiah. By using this, they have like 80 sets. Uh, this The tank used here is like this small vehicle. So this is the five different, uh, you can use five different solvents here. And um, the samples, they give you the sample also to try. Uh, mostly uh, the vegetable, so, uh, veg vegetable uh, samples. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I think they also give you a few solvents, yeah? some uh, organic solvents. So you can uh, do, uh, or usually we don't do much now. Usually we will order uh, directly uh, the silica plate. So usually we use silica gel now. It is so convenient and uh, we don't use so big. Yeah. So this is a, uh, this is a smaller one. Uh, we use uh, bigger, but not as big as the one uh, which is uh, uh, like for demonstration. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, it's uh, common. Okay, sorry. So this is actually my last slide for uh, a TLC explanations. So I, if you have any questions, maybe I will uh, reply to some questions. Uh, okay. What is the spot at the edge? Oh, okay. Uh, go out faster than the spot in the middle. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a question from uh, Erin. Uh, she's asking about the TLC tank. Uh, I will so then move back uh, later. Maybe. Uh, so then it well, actually it depends on your sample actually when you have a, a sample uh, by right it you know if you use the same same sample it will be the same no matter where you plot them uh, at the corner or in the other part in the middle as long as the is is the same sample yeah as long as you put your paper like just nicely and usually it doesn't uh the same sample will have the uh, same uh movement yeah usually that is a case but if you plot too near to the edge sometimes it might not be uh the the way the movement of the of the solvent might not be uh so uh you can imagine the solvent is like liquid like so Usually the middle will move faster, not the edge. Yeah? So you can imagine something like a river. When you across the river, yeah, the middle of the river, the, the water speed is always faster. Yeah? This is not like a river, but if you look at the, the, the movement of water, it is like a palabo. Yeah? So the middle is usually the middle should move faster. So I, I don't know why if you have a, a sample at the corner that moves faster, maybe there's a, another reason and that we have to consider, yeah. Sorry, Erin, am I answering your question? I, we have another, uh, Zilva. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, thank uh, you. Yeah, she got <laughs> it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, some sample try uh, for what uh, practicing paper because some of us already tried it using tissue now. okay yes, as water as a solvent huh? yeah tissue is also one of the uh, good uh, support yeah but it's just too soft yeah because when it's too soft 
the movement of the water is too fast, then your separation will not be good. Yeah? Yeah. Because in order to control the separation, you have to control the speed. So the, the, the faster or the, the lower, the slower the speed of the mobile phase will cause a better separation. So tissue is very fast. Maybe it's uh, quite so, uh, yeah, you, you could separate something, yeah, but it's too fast sometimes. Yeah. The mobile phase company everybody is known for so but this it may be used uh, a mobile phase that are very polar. The result wasn't the best in case it is still a relevant way to put some paper. Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it is still a, a relevant way, yeah. Just that, like, uh, like I say, the speed is too fast. Yeah. So when it's too fast, then the separation will not be good. It just everything moves together so fast. Yeah. So you have to have a difference to control the speed. That's why when you have a, a multiple tissue, maybe it's better. Maybe you can overlap the tissue and make it a bit thicker. Then so that the when the movement of the water or whatever solvent you are using, you can control the solvent speed. Yeah. Then you can have a better separation. Yeah. So I hope I'm answering your question, uh, Ziva. Okay, thank you. Have you finished with your slide uh, problem? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for the lecture, yes. I have some okay. extra slides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you see my extra slide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone who want to uh, ask Professor Lim directly, maybe, uh, yeah, you can go with your question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I will continue with the non-related <laughs> slides. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. No, yeah, it just yeah. uh, I'm, I'm just finishing. Uh, I'm just finishing. So I thought yeah, yeah. today I don't have any uh, any quiz question, but maybe from the next uh, lecture onward, I will give you some some calculation to do in the class. Maybe, yeah. Today just general, yeah, yeah. Yes, and. Uh, uh, Mm, do, do you have any assignment for student? <laughs> no, not today. Not today. Not today yeah. yeah. Sure. So they will be so happy. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, no, then, then we will give it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Some okay. I have another chat. Could you give a symbol of tank? Uh, tank. You 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 mean the like uh. The you can use any tank like a like a bigger or uh if you look at uh ah uh, comment uh if you look at the uh comment this one this is the commercial set yeah like for example here they just use a a glass uh like a container like this yeah so if your organic solvents it's uh uh stable in a plastic, you can even use a plastic sample. Yeah? And sometimes when you want to do heavy metals, because the metals is not good to use glass. So you, in this case, you have to use some uh, PB, uh, plastic <clears throat> tank, which is better. So it, it really depends on your solvent. So as long as the tank is stable uh, with your solvent, then it is okay to use in any tank. Yeah? So be careful when you use the organic solvent, then you have to use a tank with a cover. If you just use a, a non-volatile uh, solvent like water, then you can have an, an open uh, an tank, it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have another question from Artistry uh, Eka. Okay, Tia, when our F is one, where then there is an arrow, <laughs> yeah. Usually it's impossible to get one, yeah. It's, yeah, almost impossible to get one, yeah. But uh, you mean you have an one before? Adisti pernah dapat yang RF1, emang. Belum sih. Oh, in case, just in case. Oh, in case. Uh, just in case. case. Okay, just in case, bro. Yeah, sometimes um, 
you know, when you, when you have one, meaning that you cannot, the, the solubility it's with the solvent is so good. So in this case, we will reduce the, uh, the interaction with the solvent. You can dilute with something else. If you use your organic solvent, for example, if you use hexane or methanol, then when, it's, when you have one, then it's a problem because you cannot separate. So in this case, what you do is that you reduce the interaction by mixing another solvent like a water. Yeah? So when you mix water like, 80%, uh, like uh, the organic solvent, 90%, solvent 10%. And in this case, you can reduce the ERF to less than one. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you, uh, Prof. I uh, have a new student. This question about commercial gas. This question. Must do commercial gas fifth one. Uh, when we must do commercial? Okay. And for what could you tell the the conclusion of commercial gas? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, a uh, class D eka. Uh, sorry. So you. Uh, did not understand my slide before, maybe, uh, or maybe my explanation was not clear. Let me, uh, you were asking, uh, go minute. <laughs> uh, to, uh, to, like the main purpose of uh, chromatography is actually, uh, like I said, there are two main purposes to do preparative isolations or purifications and to do uh, determinations, yeah. So when you need to do separations, uh, then you need to use chromatography method. But if you do not, uh, for some uh, compounds, you do not need to separate and you can do the analysis. Um, it, it, it really depends on what you want to determine, yeah. So, for example, if you want to just uh, determine protein like a uh, uh, BSA, uh, BOA, uh, like albumin, yeah? like egg in the albumin, you don't need to use chromatography. You can just use uh, a pack that is uh, sensitive to the protein. Yeah? But when you have a digestion protein like a peptides, when you have so many peptides and you want to see the differences and because by, by separating the peptides, you can know what protein is that. So when you have an unknown sample of protein, but you don't know whether is it albumin or alginine or something else, then in this case, you have to digest the protein and you have to separate the peptides to identify the, the type of uh, protein. So that's why uh, chromatography is very, very famous now because it's in the genome analysis. Uh, actually, I'm going to talk a bit of genomics. So genomics is one of the main uh, area of chromatography in uh, modern uh, bio, uh, it's so, it, which is so, uh, what we say, uh, popular. Maybe you know genomics, right? To know the, the genome, uh, genome of, uh, of human beings, yeah. Uh, sorry. Mora, can you understand the last uh, request from the chat? Please share uh, attendance performer. Which one? Uh, it, uh, the chat, there's uh, from, from... Asi, from Asima Bashel. What, what does it mean like to share the attendance performer? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, maybe the link of the yeah. attendance. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, they, okay. they, they asked the link, the link for... For, uh, for, for the attendance, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Hi, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I will share it uh, maybe later eh, after Hi. this Q&A session. Uh, okay. Can I ask? Uh, sure, sure, Andre. Andre. Uh, so. uh, I want to introduce myself. Uh, my Hi. name is Andre Sapem Molana from uh, uh, Chemical uh, from Kasi 2020. Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I will I will ask uh, about the classification of the mm -hmm. uh, chromatography. Uh, <laughs> I just not uh, clearly understand uh, about the uh, classification of the chromatography. Uh, what is different 
of the planner and the color. So, ne, eto. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Hi. Eto. <laughs> so, this is the column. So, column means uh, something. It's uh, like a tube, yeah. So, like a tube here, like this. So, in uh, so planner means like a paper which is flat and is open. Yeah, this is open. Yeah. So, if I show you in this slide, so you can see planner is something like a paper which is an open uh, support. But the tube is like uh, something uh, you cover the stationary face inside, uh, such as like this. So, and for this kind of uh, column, we call it, they are supports. We have uh, packing materials inside, uh, like a powder, like a form of powder we pack inside the column. Yeah? So next week, I'm going to talk more about this column uh, chromatography. So actually, there are so many different uh, classifications for chromatography, like based on the um, uh, the uh, eluent and based on the stationary phase. And for for today is uh, based on the shape or the uh, we we call it the 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 type of the bed, the support. We call it the support. So either the support is in the tube. Or is it in on the paper like an open support? Yeah? So this is the main, uh, the basic uh, classifications just based on the support. So next week, uh, I will talk only the column and I will talk about uh, the, in, the, the classification based on the column size and also based on the, well, maybe uh, the uh, mobile face and also the interactions will be in the third uh, lecture. So yeah, that's why I, I say Mora's planning is very good actually, because it's from the shape, from the bottom to the uh, more uh, advanced kind of uh, classifications. Sorry, I have other questions as well. Uh, Thank you, Prof. Hi. hi. I allow to join my student. Thank you. So I guess there's no more question, is it? There's no more question, right? All okay. question has been answered. Okay. Oh, uh, is there is a Russian someone. Oh else. yeah, someone. for for from Ambren Latif. Maybe you can ask Professor Lim directly. Maybe Ambren, please. Ambren, Ambren, Ambren. What is the? Ambren Latif, are you there? Sorry, I'm trying to look at her. There's a question somewhere. Oh, I cannot find it now. So, no question. Oh, just uh, accidentally click it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, for all participants, is there oh, any question? My God, my, my hidden slide is already seen, maybe. Can I ask? <laughs> uh, yeah, Barrick, please. Hi. Okay. Uh, my name is Barik Fauzan from uh, Chemical Class D. I Hi. want to ask to Professor Lim. Okay. Hi. Hi uh, Professor. Yes. Hi. Uh, I want to ask about the TLC, Professor. Yes, please. So uh, I've just seen a video about the experiment for uh, this TLC, and mm -hmm. I. So the conclusion that uh, the the purity of the sample is uh, not really high. Mm -hmm. so yes, yes. I want to yeah. ask. Yes, uh, they they uh, they uh, buy the sample from like the chemical company in mm -hmm. a large container, mm -hmm. and they test with the TLC, and the purity mm -hmm. is not really high. So mm -hmm. why why uh, the the company uh, the chemical company still produce the uh, less purity? Is it a purpose to make the Pure, uh, the sample is not really pure, or I not really know about the purpose about that thing, mm -hmm. professor. 
Okay. Well, uh, maybe maybe there's uh maybe there are two reasons why this company uh produce the uh low purity samples for is it you mean for sale right? So uh, the, there are two reasons I can think of right now. So the first reason is when you have a lower uh purity samples, the price is cheaper and it is you can buy a lot of samples. Yeah. So if if purity of the sample is not your problem. Then if you just want to see uh, like, you know, uh, qualitative, uh, then purity is not the problem. So that is one uh, uh, reason why it's cheaper. And if you just want to do qualitative, yeah. But in terms, if you want to do quantitative analysis, then you have to buy higher quality, I mean, higher purity samples in order to reduce the error. But in this case, uh, sometimes it will depends on how how much the purity a company can provide. Yeah, so and in some cases, it will take a long time to provide purity of uh, of the samples. So sometimes, if also the technical problem, yeah, I I think the main thing is the price, maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right, professor, I think I've already answered. Yes, thank and, you. Professor. Okay, thank you. And for the case of TLC, usually we use biological, I mean, like a, like a plant pigments, uh, something which is, uh, you know, we do like a, pigments, it's, uh, it's mostly used for TLC. So, and it is easy to purify the sample by ourselves. You can just, uh, you know, distill them many times, then you can have a, a high purity samples. Yeah. So maybe that is why, maybe not many people will buy the high purity sample because it's expensive and they produce the low purity so that it's easier to sell and people who want to use, they can do it. If they need higher purity, they can do it by themselves, which is so easy actually. Hi, Professor. I, I hope I answer your questions. <laughs> yes, it's a really great answer, Professor. Okay, thank you. Do we have other questions? <laughs> Maybe somebody already see my hidden slides. <laughs> 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 the answer is already there. Anyway, I will, before it's, uh, oh, someone uh, put up the hands, is it? How, how do I do? Could you explain different between TLC and high performance TLC? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, high performance TLC is uh, uh, the name suggests high performance to have a higher uh, separation efficiency. So the difference between the usual TLC and the high performance TLC is the materials we use for the plate. Yeah? So usual plate, when uh, the powder, uh, the size of the powder will be the main difference. So in the usual TLC, the powder size is like uh, 30 microns is a bit bigger. So meaning that, but even though 30 microns, you cannot see the difference because when you touch, it's very smooth for our hands. Yeah? But if you use a HP, a HP uh, TLC, we will use a very small particles like five microns or sometimes two microns or sometimes nanoparticles, which is so expensive. So in this case, uh, it's uh, the technology for making the plate, it's very advanced right now. That, that's why the, the HPTLC, in order to increase the separation efficiency is to increase the amount of uh, salinity phase. So in order to increase the amount of salinity phase, it's uh, not the same like column. Yeah. So in the column, when you want to increase the amount, you can increase the column diameter. Yeah? But for the plate, like this open, because the, the, the plate, it it's will be de depending on how you coat your, 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 your silica gel. Yeah? So in order to increase the separation efficiency, you have to use smaller powder yeah? to increase the uh, separation capacity. That's why we, in HP TLC, we use very, very small particles compared to the TLC. The size of the particles is different. So I hope I answer the question. Uh, oh, there is an edit page on Google form, sorry. So it, yeah. and there's another uh, liquid 
two-dimensional chromatography. When we move paper to the second hand, does the paper need to dry first? Yes, yes, we need to dry first, yes. It's a good question. Yes, yes. Uh, before we move to the second pen, you have to dry first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the question. Okay. Hi. Do we still wait for questions? What do we do? Or maybe it's <laughs> enough. Yeah, because uh, we will still uh, we will uh, have lecture until two forty. Oh, hi, yeah. Wakata. Hi. And yeah, uh, <laughs> do you want to show us uh, your last slide? <laughs> yeah, it's already. Yeah, sure, sure, it's, sure. Maybe I we mean, can finish the Q&A session uh, until so, this. Yeah, I mean, the, it's nothing special. Yeah, but I think somebody <laughs> already see the slide already. <laughs> When you see this photo, it, it, not, it, is this show a photo of, uh, of something now? What is this? What is, what? Sorry, can you see my slide now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I have, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I will, Others. I will en enlarge a bit bigger. Oh, somebody has one. Oh, yes, sunflower, yes. <laughs> it's a sunflower. So in oh. in uh, uh in galaxy yeah galaxy <laughs> thank you <laughs> actually uh in Kifu uh, near to Kifu University we, there is a very beautiful sunflower garden here yeah? and it is so big and the sunflower is taller than me so when you have the time but it's only happened in summer yeah. So that's why when I first came to Japan, I think most of us when from a uh, all summer season, like Indonesia and Malaysia, we will, you know, admire the four seasons so much. Yeah? So I hope, uh, yeah, when you have a chance to visit uh, Japan, uh, please, uh, you, any season you come is, is good. Yeah. But of course, the, the romantic one is autumn is very romantic and winter is very cold, actually. And the beautiful one, like with the sakura is uh, spring. And if you want to enjoy the Matsuri, like the festival, it's in summer. Yeah? So the, the image that I wanted to, the, the message that I wanted to show for today's, it's to look at the whole image and then make your conclusion. Yeah? So this is the message of the day. Sorry, just maybe very boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so, and um, all right. So maybe this, all right. Why okay. Is it become, okay. Anyway. Uh, okay. Next week we will talk about column uh chromatography. So yeah, for those who are interested uh, to know more, maybe you can try to know the uh, retention factor. I'm gonna talk about retention factor a bit, and also separation factor, and maybe when dim. Uh, I will I will do the when dim uh, parameters. Maybe I don't know if I have time to. I will try to see, look at all the calculations maybe. And yeah, if you have time, please visit Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> and right now is the beginning of autumn. It's something like this. So we have a pond in the, in front of the library. So it's our faculty, it's just opposite uh, the pond from the library. So this is the view taken from the entrance of uh, the faculty of engineering. So later it will become better, yeah, the view. So thank you so much for your kind attentions. Okay. Hi. Okay. Okay, Prof. Lim, thank you so much Hi. for the knowledge you have shared. Uh, and I believe it was it is very useful for all participants, uh, especially uh, in the knowledge of separation chemistry. So uh, once again, Hi. thank you so much. Thank and also so much. for everyone, uh, thank you for your active particip participation. Uh, we will have the second lecture in the next week. Yeah, mm -hmm. we will uh, talk about column chromatography so don't miss it and for uh, non crd 2020 class uh, participant you can join uh, and and uh, have a communication with us through the link whatsapp i have uh, shared it to you in the chat box please join and also uh, i'm sorry for the link 
I will uh, modify it and then share to you. Yeah, and no need for uh, no need to fill the link for class C or class D. Okay, and then uh, I think it will finish until this. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, and do you want to have uh, maybe some kind of photo session, uh, Prof. Lin? Oh, oh, do do you want? I I I. I, yeah, if the student and you want, I can do. Yeah, we can. Sure, do. sure. Okay, for all participants, please uh, kindly open your uh, camera. We will have a photo session. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, someone can help me, students. Adisti mungkin bisa bantu untuk screen shooting. Um. Suka itu pas suka ngelek. Mungkin teman-teman oh, yang lain yang ada lain yang bisa. biasanya siapa? Biasanya? Yeah, let siapa? me. Oh, Mora. Let me. Oh, iya, yeah, Mita. Thank you, Bu Mita. Oke, okay, so for the first layer, keep your smile. First layer. Okay, we have five layers, so please okay. give your smile. Because we don't know which layer you are. Okay. So everyone, thank you for oh. opening your uh, camera. And for four layer, fourth layer, and the last fifth layer. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Prof. Lee, and also Hi. Pamura. Okay, yeah, thank you, problem, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, and see you good next week. Good afternoon, Bye. Bye. Thank you, problem. Hi, Mora. We need to talk about our schedule, right? Sure, Or sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. All participants uh, can be left right now. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Presenting in a very well way. I must from Pakistan.